Welcome to Take Me to Strava, the travel show that takes you on a journey for great food, culture, and meeting interesting people in little known places. Follow me as I rediscover my homeland. Aram, kita rawon. This episode, we're starting in the capital city, Kuching. You may think that the city has very little hidden away, but we'll take you on a ride through the quieter side and uncover some delicious gems. Let's go meet Farha from Paradesa, Borneo. She is one of Kuching's finest cycling tour guides. Hi, you made it! Today's a really beautiful day for cycling. Why don't you come with me and I'll show you the ropes, okay? Okay! Farha will be taking us on a cycling tour of Kuching and showing some of the best hidden secrets in this town and making sure I don't fall off during the tour. I'm super excited to take this cycling tour. But first, let's get our gear ready. Safety first. Here's your helmet. Alrighty, let's go. Where are you taking me? That way. An adventurous life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Apagi, ibo maluba, et kocha. I've never cycled through Kuching before, let alone bringing a bicycle on a prahu tambang. Is that our okay. boat? Yes, this is our boat. Well, how long is it going to take? Uh, roughly about 10 minutes, depending on the current. All right. The Sarawak River is the main waterway for Sarawak. This is actually the sole entry point back in the day during the Group Administration, where all ships must go through this river, all the way from the ocean, go through this river to get to the city. And this is our main road, basically, before all the roads were built in the city centre. And what we are doing now, getting a perahu tambang, or more popularly known as a water taxi or a small ferry, is something that has been done all the way back in the 1800s. And it's still alive today. The practice is still alive today. That is the Astana, the Old Brook Palace. Before Sarawak gained independence, that was the Old Brook Palace. That is the uh, Indian city mosque. It is built to replace the original mosque that's just across the road from it. Uh, built by the Indian merchants who settled here more, uh, over a century ago. And the original mosque dates all the way back to the 1830s. There's so much history on just a small stretch of the river. And now that we're on the other side, it's time to explore. All right, we're going to head up and then start riding around the villages. Just across the river from the bustling business centre lies a quiet little village with a hundred-year-old history. The streets are lined with gorgeous wooden homes that have combined old-world charms with modern design. This is one of my favourite houses. What house is that? Uh, it's a traditional Malay house on stilts with intricate carvings. This one is more old school, more simple in design. There's another one here that has been heavily renovated, but it still has this, you know, this really charming floor to ceiling shutters. The scenery of Kampong Nombor 1 sampai Nombor 6 is so peaceful and it's a great break from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It's got beautiful architecture, friendly people and it's a great way to work up an appetite. So I think it's time we treat ourselves with some local delights. Come, let's go makan laksa and meet my friend Dee. There's an art in making Sarawak laksa. How it was uh, being arranged in a bowl is inspired from ice kacang. It must be like a mountain like that. 
So we put the bihun first at the bottom, and then we put the foundation, which is the tauge. The tauge must be crispy when you cook it, and then we put chicken strips, and then the yellow color, which is the eggs, and after that, the prawns, lah, which is red. And on, after we put all the soup, we put the green on top. So it looks like ice kacang. This is Chef Ahit's Laksa Udang Gala. One of the best laksa this side of town. Uh, business store starts since 2007. My father-in-law, Chef Ahit, actually started the business because he was inspired by the people of Sarawak. Laksa kami orang tu kira nang unik lah, si kira orang lain. Nya si berminya. Laksa kami orang makai udang gala, and then we are the first to introduce udang gala to the market lah. Harapan Chef Ahit ialah yang mau nama laksa Sarawak tu diketahui seluruh dunia lah. Yang bestnya bila beri makan yang sedap tu lah, sedap customer kami tu. Bilanya senyum ya berfila. Tang pas hati dia rupanya makan. Oh look, our laksa is coming. This is absolutely worth the ride here. I totally agree. This laksa is a must try. It is to die for. Thank you. Thank you. Cherry lot, cherry lot, enjoy. Oh, I want to add extra spicy to it. What do you think? Yummy. Yeah. With a full belly and a full heart, we're going to start making our way back. This town is so full of unassuming beauty. Even for someone like me, who is born and raised here, I still find new discoveries every day. From local street art to architectural marvels, old and new. <sighs> that was amazing, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, the ride is almost over. We are headed back to our end point that will be just a couple hundred meters from here, so it's not really over yet. But I just want to show you one of the best views that you can get in this city. It's this one, the new Dewan Undangan Negeri. Uh, it's right on the waterfront and it's one of the best places for you to hang out at night. There's a light show going on. If you have time, you can check it out at night also. The view is going to be different and it's going to be super as well. Are you ready to go? Yep, let's go. Let's go. After the abyss! Cycling around Kuching brings a whole new perspective and I can't wait to discover more on my next ride. But for now, we're going to pack up and head off on our next adventure in Padawan. Let's go! And cut! <laughs> Welcome back to Take Me to Strawa. We are now in Padawan, a small town on the outskirts of Kuching. This charming town is made up of idyllic Bidayu villages, steep in history and surrounded by lush green landscapes. Our first stop, Kampung Danu, a village most known for kayaking and bamboo rafting. Say hello to Kampung Danu. Come, follow me. Let's meet Robert. Hello, welcome to Kampung Danu. This is where we're going to stay tonight. Come, go in. This house, we have six rooms inside. We have our kitchen, barbecue pits. We have karaoke set also for you. Tapi, anda lapar kan? Jom kita pergi cari makan. Instead of heading to a restaurant or a supermarket in search of food, we're going to do things a little different. We're going shopping, but in the jungle. I promise you, there's nothing quite like foraging for your own meal. Bonus points, it's completely organic too. But we're going to need a guide, so Jennifer and her friends will teach us how to identify edible food in the jungle. 
And here we have paku, a type of wild fern which tastes amazing when it's stir fried with belacan. Ini? Oh, besar. Ini tuh keras. Ini, oh. ini dia. Saya budak baru belajar. Ya, yeah. kalau salah tolong pujukkan. Ya, yeah, ini kan? Ya. Yeah. Ini. Selalunya paku senang cari kah? Uh, di setiap tebingan sungai sini memang adalah paku ini biasanya kami masak dengan belacan masakan kampung lah kami orang di sini uh, kalau tidak masakan kering dengan belacan kami biasanya ulam sahaja untuk kami golongan di sini paku baik sebab uh, tanaman tidak beracun tiada perosak serangga lah. Aside from paku, we're also going to search for some bamboo shoots. Ah, ini dia reboi kita cari dari tadi. Kita potong dia, kita ambil dan kupas. Harvesting rebong takes a sharp eye and steady hands. It's amazing how fast Jennifer can process the shoots with her parang. Rebong is a prized commodity for the Bidayuh people as it isn't always available. Uh, rebong ini bukan selalu dijumpai. Rebong ini adalah bermusim. Selalunya musim hujan lah. Rebong ini akan timbul. The land provides bounty, but we have to respect it too. It's important to clean up after yourself to avoid spirits following you home. Okay, ini hasil rebong yang kita kutip tadi. So kita balik dan pergi masak ke rumah. Before we head back to the homestay, there's one more ingredient to harvest: the mighty bamboo. Kita mau potong ambil buluh ini untuk masak ayam panso. Ayam panso is a local dish made by stuffing chicken and herbs in a bamboo container. It is then cooked over a wood fire till you get a delicious hot soupy dish. Wow. Medium to large bamboo stalks are carefully selected and cut to size before being processed for use. Ya, basah-basahkan, gosok-gosokkan. Di petang buluh ini. Buang dia punya miang buluh ini. Sampai miang putih dia ini habis. Supaya ayam kita dalam buluh ini tidak miang. Ayam tidak gatal. It takes quite a bit of effort to prep the bamboo. But it's going to be so worth it. Buang barang kotor dalam dia. Bilas dia sampai dua tiga kali lah, cuci dalam dia sampai dua tiga kali. Okay, ini sudah bersih. Now that the bamboo is ready, it's time to start the fire. Jennifer, bulu. Ya, kita letak sini. Kita masak apa hari ini? Masak ayam panso. Ayam pansoh dulu. Ya. Untuk ayam pansoh kita lebih suka menggunakan bulu sebab uh, tradisi. Satu lagi untuk aroma wanginya. While we're waiting for the fire to get hot, let's prep the ingredients. The flavoring comes from a mixture of onion and ginger, which are crushed using a pestle and mortar to release its fragrance. Next, we're going to marinate this beautiful organic ayam kampung chicken. We add salt, MSG, and the mixture of crushed onion and ginger. And then we mix thoroughly. Add a handful of lemongrass and finally some potato leaves. Everything is measured using the local favorite aga aga. Masukkan sekali di dalam buluh ini sehingga penuh. Once the bamboo is filled, we put it onto the fire and wait for it to cook. While that's cooking, we're going to make the next dish, the bamboo shoot and paku stir fry. Kita masukkan dulu kisar udang ini yang telah direndam. Masukkan halia yang telah dipotong. Masuk bawang merah, dah diiris bersama dengan bawang putih. 
masukkan tepung yang telah direbus tadi. Makanan kampung kalau tidak letakkan cili kering tidak sah. Masukkan kulat, kulat kulat kampung. Cendawan ni, cendawan ni dan lah. Seterusnya masukkan paku. Just listen to that amazing sizzle. I can't wait to taste it. Nampak sedap sangat. Now that the stir fry is done, it's time to go unveil our ayam panso. The smell of this is incredible. This truly is the soul food of the Bidayu people. Tada! Siap sudah, jataman. Taman, taman, taman. What's more, every village has its own twist on the flavor, so you can actually taste what the land has to offer. There's nothing quite like eating a meal that you have foraged for yourself. I am so thankful to Jennifer and her friends for teaching me a thing or two about eco shopping. Now, excuse me while I eat, and then I'll take you to Smadang River for an adventure. And we are back on Take Me to Srawa. Ready for an adventure? Meet this handsome guy. Hi, I'm Luke Kenny Doring. So I'm the river guide for Semedang Borneo Adventure. We engage to the local community to be the bamboo raft. So the local community normally, they pick up the bamboo raft and they have to dry it for at least uh, a week or two until it is fully dry. Then only we assemble it and we tie it uh, using ropes. Get to three partition. Normally, the bamboo raft is about 18 meter long and it can fit four person. Our journey is 10 km altogether, but this stretch of river, it is called Sungai Semadang, and we, it can reach up to Kuching waterfront and it flows out to the main river of Sarawak. So the rapid on this river is not that tough, it's quite easy. You will learn on how to maneuver, we'll teach you how. Most importantly, we get our team to brief you on the safety, and also when you are on the river, you have to listen to our instructions. Just in case if you're capsized, you have your life jacket to depend on. But do not worry, our safety board is always right behind you. Just go with the flow. If you're ready, come, let's go. Let me pass you your life jacket. Yes, please. This is your life jacket. Thank you. Oh, so nice and cold. Where do I go? Gosh. For now, I sit. <laughs> We're only two minutes in and I'm already drenched. Let the adventure begin. <laughs> Madang River is gorgeous with its cool water and rapids. It's most commonly used for rafting and kayaking. As we paddle on, Luke tells me more about its history. The locals used to use rafts as a means of transportation and they go up to the, up to the village up there with boats. But since you are here, you get to experience on this bamboo raft. And in July normally, we have this Padawan Raft Safari where the locals compete among themselves to win the title of the King of River for 42 kilometers. Can outsiders join the Padawan Raft? Definitely, it's open for public and it's also open for international participants. Everyone should uh, take this trip because it's very near to Kuching and you get to experience the freshness of the river on a raft. And it's fun, it's like what we have today. Oh no! I threw a hose overboard. Luckily, he's not an amateur like me. So what can we usually see here, Luke? If you're lucky enough, you can see eagles. That's very common here. Other than that, kingfisher. Uh, Monitor lizard. Monitor lizard. Otter. Yeah, if you're very lucky, you can see otter. In this river, we have a lot of fish together. Later on, I'll show you thousands of it in the Awesome. 
Look up there, 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 there. Eagle there, behind the tree. So, uh, Suleiman. <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm the Smadang River rafting is such an unforgettable and fun experience. It's something that you should definitely try at least once in your life. Plus, it's not too far away from Kampong Danu, so if you're ever in the Padawan area, you can have great Bidayu food and go river rafting in one trip. The rapids here will melt your worries away and you'll get an arm workout at the same time. Apu, there's thousands of takada fish. This area is part of a tagang fishing system, a sustainable farming method that is managed by the locals. There's strictly no fishing here and the fish are separated into red, green and yellow zones. Only fish that are fully grown can be harvested. This practice ensures that there is enough fish for centuries to come. For now, I'm going to dive in, cool off and get ready to go see a couple of living treasures. I'm Nitya Kaku. Hi, Nene! This is Nene Singai, one of the last few Bidayu ring ladies in the world. They are renowned for their signature copper rings around their neck, arms, and legs. We are lucky to have met the last two ring ladies of Sarawak. Hopefully, with the title change in weaving heritage into modernity, more young women of the tribe would be inspired to revive this tradition again. For now, I'm signing out. Dapo Unya Nubakon. See you next time. Ooh, 
tenggelam. Tunggu lah, elok kan.